Good morning, everybody. I am going to do a video this morning on partial transparency. I know I've done that before, but I have learned a couple things in the last couple months. So I have opened a transparent file in Photoshop. It is A4 size. And before I get started, I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut that I created to set up my file. And you can find this uh, tips on how to do it in the file section. So I'm just going to hit, whoops, F18. And you see that gives me a nice black layer with lines, you know, and gives me a gutter all the way around. So I have a safe zone for printing. And I do like a white layer on the bottom so I can switch back and forth from the shirt color to white. So I'm just gonna hit Shift F5. And I'm gonna fill this layer down here with white. So now we're going to start this file with a white layer and a black layer. And that way I can just go back and forth um, figuring out what I like. So now let me go over here and I'm going to just drag this avocado file that I got from Creative Fabrica. And let me pull this one down below. So I'm just dragging these layers up and down. Uh, so here's my avocado. He's very cute. I'm going to duplicate this layer just in case I mess something up uh, so I can have something to look at. And now I'm going to make our avocado bigger. So I just went up here to the move tool. It is a smart object. When you drag and drop, your file remains a smart object. So resizing it is not gonna hurt anything, which is why I like to use smart objects. So now I'm going to just pull it up and down until I'm happy with the size. Let me pull it up a little bit more here. So I really wanna fill as much space as I can Okay, so that looks pretty good. Well, yeah, that looks pretty good. And now I'm gonna center it up. Um, I like this little line to match up with my guides that I have here. Okay, so he is centered and we are ready to go. Now, if I was smart, which you know what, I am gonna do that. I will duplicate the layer, um, you know, now that I have it resized. So let me just, res let me just duplicate that. Okay. And I'm gonna turn this layer off by clicking the I button like that. And I'm going to get a layer mask. So uh, in order to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to choose different areas of this design to rasterize. So I am gonna start a layer mask. I'm gonna go down here at the very bottom of my layers panel and click on this button here. Now you can also, if you can't find that, let me delete that. You can also go over here to layer and choose layer mask and reveal all. Hide all would be black, uh, but we want a white layer mask. So there we go, it's there. Now I'm going to click on the design over here. So any, whatever one is highlighted is the one that you're working on. And trust me, you wanna take a look over here every now and then and make sure you're working in the mask or the design and not vice versa. So I'm gonna click on our avocado cause he's who I want to um, play with. And I'm gonna go over and grab my magic wand tool in the tool panel. And if you don't see it, it could be because you have one of these others selected. So whenever you see that little tiny triangle down there at the bottom, it means there's other tools hidden in there. So we're gonna use a magic wand tool. And this yellow right here is a big block of color. So that definitely needs to be rasterized. So all I did was click on the yellow Okay, with my magic wand tool and that selects everything that's that color. And now I'm gonna go over to the mask, click on the mask, and then I'm gonna fill that with black. Now you can do that two ways. You can do Shift F5 and then change your color to black. And all that does is, so what a mask is, and I know it's confusing, 
A mask means it's covering what's on your original design. So it's masking that so you can't see it. So in a minute, we'll change it to partial transparency. But for the moment, we're going to fill it with black. So now I'm going to Command D on a Mac or Control D on a PC and deselect that part. Then I'm going to go back over to the avocado and see what else needs to be rasterized. So I'm, I think this brown right here probably could stand to be rasterized. Now, I've been stalking Christopher. Um, you know, I really pay attention to what he says since he is very familiar with white toner printing. And... Uh, I am not exactly sure what his last name is, maybe Sigmund. Um, but he says that you don't have to rasterize if it's under three fingers wide. Um, this is an A4, so it's 8.27 inches wide. So I think I can get away with just rasterizing this lighter brown. So I've clicked on the brown with my magic wand tool. Let me do that again. So again, over here with the magic wand, click on the lighter brown and then I'm going to do the same thing edit oops sorry can't fill on a smart object so see it told me I need to be on my layer mask so I clicked on my layer mask edit fill black and command or control D to deselect that so now you see that this is I, I feel like this will be fine now that we've got that portion. So what I want to do is make that partially transparent or change the opacity of this layer mask. And to do that, we're going to fill it with 80 to 85% white. Now it does depend on how good you are marrying. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's go over here and we're going to get to edit, fill, and we're gonna change it to white. And so for this example, I'm gonna use 80%. In my last file, I used 85% transparency. I think it turned out fabulous. But for this, we're gonna go with 80. You know, test it and see what works for you. So 80% opacity right here. And I'm gonna hit okay. And if you notice, this right here, has changed from completely black to a light gray. So let me let me just redo that. So Command Z, that's black. And now let me redo it. Redo fill. And now you see that it is a little bit lighter. So let me take out the white and black. And you can see that that section of the design is partially transparent. So now what we want to do, um, because when you rasterize an image, it does take away a lot of the color. So we really want to boost that saturation. So in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and rasterize this layer. And I, don't, I wouldn't have to, but uh, I could do it as a smart object, but I'm about ready to bring it into ProRip. Anyway, uh, I'm going to right click on the mask and apply layer mask. So again, let's take off our, you know, our uh, colors, colored background, and make sure that we are transparent, which we are. You can see the little um, checkerboard in the back. Okay, and now I'm going to do an adjustment layer to make it more saturated. Now, I personally have my Photoshop workspace set up to have my adjustment layers up here at the top. And so I would go over here to Hue Saturation, and I'm probably going to bump it like to 50%. Um, again, I, I like my designs to be visible. Um, so you could do it there or you could, let me just delete that. You could go over here to layer, to layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation. Okay, and you'll see this box comes up over here. And what we're going to do is let me turn the black back on because that's going to be the shirt, the back of my shirt. And I'm really going to boost the saturation probably to about 50, maybe something like that. Um, <clears throat> and then I am going to 
put it into ProRip. So I do think that this green right here is maybe going to be a little bit dark for a black shirt. Uh, so I'll probably adjust the brightness in ProRip Pro as well. So let's go ahead and export this. And I'm just going to go up here, export, quick export as a PNG file. And save my avocado. And then I have already emailed it to myself because I am on a Mac and I have yet to figure out how to share files uh, with parallels between Windows and Mac. So um, we will go ahead and come into Windows and go from there. So here we are. And I have loaded in my avocado. So it is just sitting here and we're going to click open. And you know what? I'm not sure if I did anything to this. So let me just bring in a new one. All right, here it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So I'm just going to click up here on the avocado. So it makes it visible over here in my job tab. And I know there's ways you can do this, but I'm going to just go ahead and make the size 8.27. So there we are. And I've got my A4 size here, tray one, thick to 163. And so now let me go into the jobs tab and I'm going to do color adjust. So because we want to use partial transparency and that we, anything that is partially transparent is going to have lines or dots, depending on what you choose. I'm going to make sure this very whole size and areas of partial transparency is checked and we want this enable ink removal to be checked as well. Now <clears throat> I'm really going to push the limits here. I have done 0.7 many, many times and I'm sure it will be fine. In fact, uh, you know what, let's try that and see how that looks. Now I am going to reduce my white coverage to 185. And I'll probably still give myself a little bit more saturation. And I'm going to boost my brightness to about five. All right. And we're going to check OK. And then I'm just going to double, whoops. I do that so many times. It's so aggravating. My own fault. So when that happens and you lose it, you just scroll up. Again, I'm sure there's something easier. Um, okay, so I'm going to double click on my image and open up the job ticket properties, click on color layer, and then I'm going to go down to ink removal. And this is where you decide how wide or how many lines you want and what angle and that sort of thing. So I'm going to choose 28 and I'm going to choose uh, 70 as my angle. It is a portrait. So normally, uh, if you do portrait and you wanted vertical lines, you would make that 90, but I like mine to be on a slight angle. So I'm going to use 70 and I'm going to change it to line. And then let's see what happens. So I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to right click on the image right here. So right click and rip only. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat. Okay, so now I'm going to right click again and choose view raw data. Let me just get rid of that box forever. Okay, so here is our lines at 0.7 uh, whole size. And I think that looks pretty good. So let me make it a little bit smaller so you guys can see the whole thing. Uh, that might be too small. Okay, so if you look here, so all the areas that were not partially transparent are solid and the areas that were partially transparent now have lines. And the thing to keep in mind is that these colors are not going to be what prints out on your printer. So that they are definitely not representative of what you're gonna print. So I am going to go ahead and print it and I will do a video of me marrying and applying it to a shirt. But you know what? Let's open this up again and let's see what happens if we change our line size to one, okay? 
so I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to go back over here to ink removal and I'm going to change this transparency hole size to one and hit OK. <clears throat> and now let's rip only. and view raw data. So if you'll see here, by changing that hole size, it really makes my lines tighter together and it will be less perceptible on the shirt. So I have a really good press. I have a Fusion and I press this, something like this, I'll press it like a two pressure. Um, but I have gotten a lot of experience doing that. So you may want to start with the 0.7 and then move to a higher value. Uh, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will make another video sometime this weekend, uh, marrying and pressing the shirt. Uh, well, let's see. Oh, to uh, print it, we're just going to click over here, print, and that should do the trick. So again, have a great day and I will talk to you guys soon.